Fucking me and my asshole, I'm the prince of bloody darkness, Sharon. It's okay, Ozzy. We'll get you another one, Ozzy. It's okay, love. We'll get you another truck, love. But Sharon, it's it was I put so much money into it, the fucking thing, and I <laughs> it was barely even fucking damaged, and they totaled it over some these motherfuckers they can't drive in Austin, Texas, Sharon. But it's okay, sweetie. You found your car in Alabama, love. Are you recording? Yeah, I got all that. Oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I just hey guys, what's up? It's Michael Ridley. It's your boy. You already know what time it is. It's uh, you don't actually. It's August seventh. It's seven thirty-five Central Standard Time in the great town of Austin, Texas. You're listening to R three. It's your boy, uh, little Chinky Baby, and <laughs> it's, it's it's Chinky F Baby in the motherfucking house, dude. It's Chinky F. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I've just been like playing around with uh... a. <laughs> I was in the house. I was just in the house in my underwear walking around, and I was like, because I was thinking about uh, the Osbournes. You remember the fucking TV mm-hmm. show, The Osbournes on MTV? <laughs> that was like one of the first reality TV shows. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about reality TV, and I was like, dude, I would be so good on like MTV's like real world. You remember they had Real World Austin? Yeah. And that was my favorite season of Real World. And I fucking, <laughs> dude, I wanted to fucking move to, I wanted to be like that glimpse of Austin was so much different. MTV Real World Austin. I remember there was like this redheaded guy who was just like getting mad bitches, and uh, his uh, fucking wiener was out, and they made fun of his wiener. They caught him with his pants down, and they were like, "It's so pink." (laughs) 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 I just remember like (laughs) them making fun of his wiener for being white and pink, (laughs) and I'm like, "Yo, that's crazy!" Like, if you are ginger, you have a fucking pink ass wiener, dude. You have a fucking albino white shaft in a pink fucking dome piece, dude. <laughs> That's crazy to me, dude. That would suck, dude. You all right? It's like uh, God blesses you with a nine inch hog. <laughs> God blesses you with a nine inch hog, but you're ginger, so it's fucking. <laughs> so it looks like a highlighter. It looks like a human highlighter. <laughs> But yeah, reality TV was fucking crazy, dude. Today's like, I don't know, I just feeling like, when we talk about like some nostalgia shit from the early 2000, wow, is that's what you guys like to hear? I fucking, uh, I don't know, dude, I was just doing like, you couldn't make the Osbournes nowadays. You couldn't make, you couldn't make the Osbournes nowadays. It's just like, Ozzy's like fucking, dude, Ozzy is like falling apart, dude. If I ever... I swear to God, dude, if I ever get that bad, just of mice and men my ass, please. Just fucking, fucking, just fucking put a fucking 12 gauge behind my fucking left ear and turn on click, click, boom, please. Click, dude. click, boom. Yeah. Fucking. Uh, this isn't the green room. Yeah. Yeah. Where am I? Just fucking. Yeah, just click, click, boom my ass from, uh, from the back. Pause. Just fucking. <laughs> Just fucking, uh, having, having bathroom complications, shitting all over the nation. <laughs> click, click. Sharon. It, I'm trying to think of like what a, uh, I'm trying to think of like what a modern day episode of the Osbournes would be like. <laughs> it would just be fucking, He's just like, Ozzy's just shitting himself. Brain rot. Talk. Yeah, just, uh, just fucking Ozzy's just shitting himself. He's just fucking, he's, he's done. He's not even up. He's, there's no one there anymore. <laughs> there's nobody. <laughs> Like there's uh for sure there's someone in there, but I don't think it's it's not 1980 Ozzy. In the meantime, pull up a picture of like young Ozzy and young Sharon, because like they're like completely different people, dude. He is just, uh, and I feel like I've, I'm not gonna say I've done as much drugs as Ozzy Osbourne, but I definitely uh was on the path of doing so. It was a fucking nightmare, dude. I couldn't, I just couldn't picture like. I couldn't picture an episode of uh, the Osbournes nowadays. It'd just be like fucking Ozzy walking out of his room. You know, Ozzy's always walking out of his room looking for Sharon. That's like every episode. It's just, Sharon! Sharon! What, sweetie? What do you need, love? Sharon, somebody went into my wardrobe and shit in every pair of me trousers, Sharon. No! Ozzy, I'm pretty sure that was you, darling. No, impossible. 
Absolutely inconceivable. Somebody shitting my favorite pair of corduroy trousers. <laughs> Ozzy, there's diarrhea trickling off your ankle, darling. Sharon, <laughs> uh, uh, come into my room and change me diaper, Sharon. I'm the Prince of Darkness. Wipe my arsehole. And then fucking Jack's like, Dad. <laughs> Jack. Jack Osborne. Dad. I don't think he has. I don't yeah, think... I think he has an accent. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Jack Osborne does they not have. They all have accents. No way, dude. Mm -hmm. Not Jack. Mm -hmm. Jack Osborne doesn't have a fucking accent. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. I fucking watched this video. Really? Yeah, it's like they have like a new show where it's basically like showing your grandparents memes. <laughs> it's Jack Osborne and he just... Shows them videos or whatever. <laughs> Cough mic. Sorry, guys. This was Ozzy back in the 80s. Uh. Put your dick inside my ass. I know my pussy's super tight. <laughs> yeah, Ozzy did some gay shit back then, dude. You think so? <laughs> For sure. That dude was getting geeked out on coke and just blowing dudes. Look at that, dude. <laughs> He's fucking blowing dudes. That is crazy. He bit the fucking head off of a bat, which is something we would never consider doing in this new world we live in. Well, maybe me. <laughs> fucking, what does Oz, what, what Ozzy Osbourne and Chinese people... <laughs> what does Ozzy Osbourne and Chinese people have in common? <laughs> they, love a good, they love a good bite of a bat, dude. That's crazy. Uh, actually, Ozzy started COVID. Ozzy, if you think uh, about it. Ozzy never got COVID because he was biting bats. <laughs> I have a natural immunity. I'm the Prince of Darkness. I have a natural immunity to the plague, Sharon. But, but Ozzy, you're literally shitting your pants right now, sweetheart. You're darling. There's, you've got Rhea squirting out the back. No, impossible. That can't be... <laughs> Uh, I suppose you're right, darling. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Uh... Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. The way they cut it off before he did it. Inside yeah. the music. Yeah, inside the music isn't going to show a bat getting its head ripped off, dude. That was Where's daytime that? Del, dude. Oh, God. My eye's doing that thing that you hate. Oh, God. it's The mic's picking it up. Too. I know. It's, really it's gross. so fucking bad. So, like, when I was younger, I got need in my eye socket. So now my fucking eye socket sounds like a badussy. Like, my, my eye, like, just holds fluid. And it's like, swishes in my sinus here. Watch. I can, like, poke my eye and it makes a crazy squeaky sound. Watch this. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Yeah, this is on the free side of the show, too. Like, I'm not even waiting for the Patreon. I'm giving you guys squeaky eye hole for free. Watch. That Incredible. Is crazy. Isn't that? Because, look, I go to the other side. Nothing. Nothing. I got need in this part of my face. Whoa. Somebody hit me with a flying knee when I was a young bull. Can you play, like, a song with it, you think? Tommy La Gasolina. <laughs> I can do the fucking Mexican. Uh, I can hit it with the do. Do, 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 do. Guys, welcome to the uh, R3 show. This is what you get on the free side, man. We've changed since we've, <laughs> we've changed since we started the Patreon. Things are different around Things here. Things are different. You guys want that juicy shit. Uh, it's on the other side. I don't know, consider that was pretty juicy. That was, <laughs> that was that was the juiciest thing you're gonna get for free nowadays. I'm just kidding, but if you guys do want to consider uh, heading over to the Patreon and uh, sub in, also doing... we got a show to plug. Oh yeah yeah yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, I uh, I'm very excited. I'm very grateful for the the boys over at the Sweat Legion. I want to give a quick second to give those homeboys a motherfucking uh, shout out ski because we got a couple of new bulls in the pen. We got a spec 92 shout out to a spec for joining you're the newest member i appreciate you buddy and then of course my boy jimmy jimmy dude i miss you brother i can't wait to see you man i'll see you in new york we're going to um we're going to kill tony madison square garden tomorrow that's gonna be fun shout out austin and uh nick and charles b of course my five brothers keeping this little six boat now there's six six 
Yeah. There's total new members, six. Well, I don't know how to pull up the full list of oh, members. Oh, one of them might just be a free follower or something. Those are all the paid guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how it works. We're still learning. We're still learning. I don't know how this shit works. I want to click the list of members. But, yo, you guys are keeping this little boat afloat, so I really appreciate that. Also, we got my dog in the studio. He's not not pictured my dog, Marvel. He's just laying, just being a fucking absolute bag of potatoes right now, dude. It's good to see him here. Damn it, dude. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I just feel like... uh, I just miss, like, reality TV and shit, dude. I miss MTV, like, that MTV reality TV shit, like, where most of their lineup was reality TV shows. What did they have? They had Next. Do you remember Next, Taylor? It was the dating show. It was like the it was like the early 2000s equivalent of the dating YouTube channels where they slap the buzzer. Okay. They sit in front of each other, and there then they go. press a buzzer, and that determines if they want to continue the date. But yeah, next, with the bus, next no, I is do remember so that. funny, dude. Next is so fucking funny, dude. Probably so get, maybe we could we'll, probably watch. We could probably watch some next on the show. I don't <laughs> think we'll get hit with a really CP CR. I don't think CP. No, not a CP. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I was see, thinking copy. We, I don't know. MTV might fuck us over. Trainer, but I don't want to have to whip these guys in shape. Guy isn't a professional basketball player. I'm hoping he's hung like one. Yo, hit pause. <laughs> <laughs> Did that chick just say, like, I hope it's a black guy with a big dick? <laughs> like, Even if he's not a basketball player, I hope he's hung like one. That's crazy. That's so she was like, she was like, what's your type basketball man? <laughs> Even if he with doesn't huge cock. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I remember being a kid, like this girl says Allison, she's 19 years old or whatever. And I remember being a kid, like, whoa, they they got like these grown-ups are actually Yeah, I was like You remember when you thought being 19 was like a grown-up? <laughs> now we're 30. <laughs> we're in our 30s, like you fucking kids. That's so funny to me, dude. Because it was so like uh, MTV's Next was so fucking unhinged. Just like that, there was a per- that was a perfect example of why I loved it. This is two seconds into it. Twelve seconds into an episode. Yeah, twelve seconds into this There's fucking a big dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> twelve seconds <laughs> into this clip, and this bitch is talking about, I want him to have a big dick. I'm Allison. <laughs> so it was like so basically how the show worked. It would be like, uh, you know. Five cringy ass dudes and one like six or seven out of ten girl, and they would all be simping over her super hard, and it just kind of got like funny. It it just got funny to the point where it was like, why y'all, you know what I mean? It's not like you're gonna, yeah, you know what I mean. You're not fucking, you're not sealing the deal. You're just going on a date with her, and they were, I don't know, it was so funny. Like so, there was like a bus would pull up. I just remember they'd be at a location, and then the girl who's, like, uh, picking her, you know, the person she wants to date, a bus would pull up, and then, like, sometimes a pe- sometimes a guy, like a contestant, would just walk off the bus, and they would say, next, so they're ready for the next right. date, or, like, the next person, they would just announce next. Like, the moment the dude takes one step off the bus, she'd just be <laughs> like, all right, next, I don't even want the, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that's such a funny dating con- dating show concept to me. It's just, just, like, mid, like... <laughs> Could you imagine being like 20 years into a relationship? You meet your girl on next, all right? Everything's good. You guys have kids. You're like you you get married, you have kids and like you're now fast forward, you guys are both like in rocking chairs in your late 70s and she looks over at you and you look over at her and she goes, "I'm so and and you look at her and you go, "I'm so glad I spent my whole life with you." And she's like, Next. <laughs> she just hits you with the next. You guys lived your whole fucking lives together. You have grandchildren and shit. Next. <laughs> that would be a funny ass sketch idea. I should have picked Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's now she's like stroking a picture of Eddie like it's that bitch from Titanic. <laughs> she's just thinking of what could have been. And that was 40 years ago. <laughs> That was, I'm 89 years old, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> that was your grandma's big TV moment. Yeah, or she was on fucking next. You want to watch a little yeah. bit more of this? He's hung like one. <laughs> I'm sorry, he hit pause again. <laughs> He's hung like one. Just <laughs> sent me into the fucking ceiling. Oh, he's hung like one. <laughs> this guy isn't a professional basketball player. I'm hoping he's hung like one. <laughs> the music if these rules. Guys don't clean their teeth, it probably. 
probably means they have smelly balls. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? If you don't brush your teeth, you probably have smelly balls. <laughs> Next. That's cool. She wants a dude with clean teeth and non-stinky balls. Wait, I've never heard of that one before. That, that that's how unhinged this show is. You see how like totally unfazed I am by that because I'm like, oh yeah, we're watching next. Like, dude, TV sucks nowadays, yeah. bro. Content TV sucks nowadays. Like, this is funny. Like, what the fuck? If he doesn't brush his teeth, he probably got stinky balls. <laughs> what the again, fuck? dude? We're 14 seconds in. <laughs> that's the second Thanks for yeah, yeah. Thanks for keeping me updated with the time stamps. <laughs> yeah, like, just that's, dude. That's fucking two bangers. I know that's so good. 14 seconds. I want to make a YouTube edit where it's like an episode of Next, but it just incre gets <laughs> increasingly more unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> it's like every fucking episode. Let's see if this does. It probably means they have smelly balls. Next. Okay, guys, get ready to go one on one. The daters, and then it breaks down. I'm Anji. I'm 19, and I'm a pre-med student, so I really know my way. Yeah, Asian dude named Anji. I'm Justin. I'm, 19, I'm gay. I'm black and Italian, so I may be the first real Italian stallion. Oh, so cringe. It's so cringe. Like they're little fucking things, where it's like. Like, if I was on Next, I'd be like, hey, I'm Michael Ridley, I'm 31 years old, I'm chinky, I'm sweaty, little Caesars hot and ready. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was me. Like, I walk off the bus and she's like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Fucking <laughs> bitch. Motherfucking fruit flies in this motherfucker. Get away with saying that I love Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I'm Brian, I'm 25, once this girl sees my baby blues, she'll forget what color hers are. I'm Carl, I'm 21, and I play college baseball, so I can't wait to show this girl my big bat. What? What? I'm Carl, I'm 21, home dude was 25. <laughs> he said I can't wait to show her my big back. Big bat. Oh, my big bat. He plays college baseball, oh. so he wants to show her his... Everything was like some kind of sexual innuendo, too, and it was so, like, it wasn't even clever. It was just bad. Just mm -hmm. bad sexual in innuendo. And then you're, you're you're like, 12, 13 years old watching this, and you're like, dude, this rules. <laughs> I just remember, like, oh, fuck, dude, next is on. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And then fucking, uh... And then Pimp My Ride is, like, right after. Dude, do you remember... That was, like, peak MTV for me. Yeah. What? Do you remember parental control? Parental control? Yeah, where they had to date the parent of... Like, oh, like and then the parent... Date, you yeah, had to the date her mom, and then the parent would decide if you moved on or whatever. Yeah. That was a crazy show. And then they would... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your parents would go on a date for you, and then they pick your date for you. Uh, so basically, like, Indian people. Uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, how Indian people and Arabs meet. Oh, they might have <laughs> brought it back. Parental control was a good concept. But the funny thing is, is that at the end, they would show you who you missed out on. And then you'd get to see the kids, re the, the, the kids reaction to their parents picking somebody that wasn't really the best fit. Oh, no, dude. There's a clip. I just remembered. From parental control, you want to show the viewers? Yeah. Hell yeah. God, dude, I just remember fucking, dude, that was just peak reality television for me, dude. The Osbournes, fucking Viva La Bam, Pimp My Ride, uh, Next, fucking Parental Control. Uh, later on, like maybe 2008, 2009, we had Silent Library. That was like the last one for me. Silent Library used to rip. Oh, yeah, and of course Jersey Shore, but I didn't even really watch Jersey Shore like that. All my fucking friends loved that shit. I just couldn't fuck with it. I fucking hate Italian people, so... <laughs> Holy D, dude! My friend, uh, one of my friends, started watching it again and said that it, they just had the best insults. Like they'd call each other trash bags. You're you fucking, fucking trash bag. bag. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and I remember people using the Jersey Shore slang in school and wanting to fucking unalive myself. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a specific thing I remembered from uh, the time I was on MTV's Parental Control. Dodged a bullet. Oh, that's not it. Incredible. Wow, I'm trying to think of other shows too. Oh, fucking Room Raiders. You remember Room Raiders? God, try to pull up some clips. Do you guys remember fucking Room Raiders where they'd be like, yo, let's go through this 17 year old girl's room and try to find her vibrator and then we'll put that on television because <laughs> that's not fucking weird. We'll have the boys in the van outside. We'll have a bunch of dudes in the van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
God damn. No, no, no. It would be the girls in the van. So the opposite sex would be in the van while the potential, uh, you know, the, the dater, the person who gets to pick, the person who gets to pick, there'd be like, you know, the opposite sex of like, that ooh, they have in the van. That in their room. I don't want to date them. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it would be if I'm if I'm rating the room, it would be four chicks, and then the four chicks would find me finding their dildos, Here and then there would be like some crazy sized dildo, and it's like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. And then on the inverse, if it was uh four guys in the van and one chick doing the room rating. They'd always do like the jizz check. <laughs> they, oh, would, yeah. they would hit your room with a jizz with stain. The black light? They would hit your room with a jizz stain check. Bro, I'm failing that shit every time, bro. <laughs> you like you like fucking flick the flashlight in my room. You're like, Jesus Christ. How did he get it? It's like on the ceiling and shit. How the fuck did he get it up there, dude? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. I'm not passing a jizz check. No way. There's no way. What? How the fuck? <laughs> dude, none of the boys. No, nobody none I know. None of the boys I, on the Patreon, even. None I don't of the even. Boys. No, no, none, none of y'all. Of Definitely none of y'all are passing the JC, the J, dude. The J, the JC. Dude, I'm gonna hit you with a JC. It's funny. I have a, a flashlight that has a black light mode, and I will jizz check people <laughs> no, in public. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, I'll pull up. You You've seen me do this. I walk up to somebody, and I'll be like, "Jizz check," and I fucking scan them down, and they're just covered. And they're all like, "No, dude, I had a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I had a burrito. There was some, there was sour cream. Oh, yeah. It's wild." How you could just, I, and that's the inspiration from it, from the jizz check. When I do jizz check, it's because I think of Room Raiders. And that's, dude, Room Raiders was such a fucking gem. Singles the surprise of their lives. When they find out they're being picked for a date, not by their looks or charm, but by what's inside their bedrooms. Uh-oh. The girls watch helplessly as their dirtiest secrets are revealed. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. What is he doing? Uh, Put it down. A notebook. Oh, oh. Oh, damn, this bitch was drawing anime porn. <laughs> they found her anime porn notebook. How Huge embarrassing. Cocks. Yeah, she's just drawing fucking Goku with a big, veiny fucking honker. <laughs> Room Raiders is fucking wild, dude. God, we need to bring this shit back, dude. Is that, I have a graveyard across the street from my house. Oh, she's oh. so dark and mysterious and different. Is cosplay is where you find an anime character and you make their costume to the best of your ability. When I get into costume, I Whoa. end up having a photo shoot with friends or I go to conventions wearing them. Most important qualities I look for in a boyfriend probably be humor. Dude, early 2000s cosplayers, me. that's crazy. That's legitimately crazy because it was just the the people weren't that good at it. I don't even know if like Eve. EVA foam was around or whatever, like all the yeah. nice, all the materials they use. Cosplaying has never been more advanced than it is right now with 3D printing and all that. Back then it was like, man, I'm gonna just mix and match and this is Goku. <laughs> yeah, I found a, I found a fucking, you know, prison jumpsuit. I put a blue belt around the waist. Man, I'm friggin' Goku, dude. I don't give a god dang. 90s cosplay. <laughs> That's just a fucking Fresh Prince fucking outfit. Or just put 2000s. Because if, if you put 90s cosplay, yeah, early 2000s cosplay. 2000s cosplay. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, it was kind of pretty, uh, yeah, that dude, <laughs> that dude has like a chef's, I don't even know what character that is. Oh, they're, they're JoJo characters. Okay. But yeah, that was pretty much it. It was all like kind of cloth and shit like that. So if you were a cosplayer back then, you were really in the nitty gritty. Well, that one's kind of simple, dude. You could just paint yourself blue. It was kind of, you know, there w there wasn't no goddamn Master Chiefs walking around, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. There wasn't no fucking World of Warcraft ass fucking suits of armor or fucking Warhammer 40K. Have you seen those guys? They'll dress up as like Warhammer 40K. And it's like, dude, yeah, it took it took it took Adam three years to make this suit. And he's just like walking around with a giant gun. I think that shit's kind of badass. I want a fucking I want a halo suit. You know I want a motherfucking halo suit, dude. I look like one of them Asian people that would be a Spartan too. Chief. Chief. <laughs> Chief. Just a mullet. Chief. <laughs> Chief. The Covenant. Chief. 
Yeah, I'm just a I look I look like an Asian NPC from Halo. Hey, Chief. How are you, Chief? Asian recruit Halo. I don't think they had any Asian people in Halo, which is crazy because I feel like, you know, there's always an Asian person in sci-fi movies. Yeah, there you go. They did have an Asian. See, there you go. That's exactly what I was talking about. The fucking Asian lady. There you go. Yeah, in the Halo live action, there's a woman, an Asian woman with a mullet. What the fuck is this? Click the lady. To the left. Yeah, there you go. There's me. (laughs) That's me in Halo. Chief. Chief. (laughs) That's a fucking Asian lady with a mullet. Hey, here's something I've noticed about sci-fi is that anytime anytime an Asian person's in a sci-fi movie, they have to give them some kind of Viking haircut. They can't just be Asian in the movie. You got to be like a... They always have a Viking haircut. Like if you type in uh, type in Asian guy from Star Wars. I can't remember his name, but I remember when I saw fucking Rogue One. There's an Asian guy, Star Wars Rogue One. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that guy. He has dreadlocks. I think they gave him dreads. Yeah, right there. Far left, bottom. Uh, Yeah, left. Yep, click that one. Yep. Boom. <laughs> Give him some fucking big old dookie dreads. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like me when I'm, like, 50. I hope I look like that when I'm 50. Chirut Imwe. Why did they give him that weird-ass name? Chirut Imwe. But, yeah, cosplaying back then was crazy. You want to keep room raiding? Let's go back to room raiders. I know we go down these fucking rabbit holes in R3, but I want to fucking, I'm on a nostalgia kick right now. Going back to the room raiders, baby. They always found like a, they always found like moldy food too. Like you were just nasty. It was just kind of like exposing your ass. Mm-hmm. The whole point of the show was just to fucking expose the shit out of you, dude. The best of your ability. When I get into costume, I don't tell their identity. All filled- My name is Pete. <laughs> dude, one- total creep. My name is Pete, and I want to smell your feet. <laughs> 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 My name's Pete, me. and I have a foot fetish. <laughs> For all the girls that I don't pick to go on a date on, don't worry. I've written down your address, and I'll be outside of your house this weekend, staring through the window. <laughs> oh my God. But I don't get to see or speak to you before I choose. But I do get to go through your rooms and see what you're like before I make my decision. So I always that- love how they. I always love how they. Uh, they always react like they didn't sign the paperwork. <laughs> For like, yo, we're gonna have this nerdy dude walk through your bedroom and sniff your panties and jerk off on national television. Oh, yeah, by the way, there's going to be a fucking 19-year-old virgin just in your room sniffing your fucking, sniffing your filthies, right? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, and then and then they're in the van. They're like, no, are you serious? You know what I mean? They're like, you, you signed the paperwork, you dumbass. That's what I loved about reality TV. I, I love that this was the hot dude that they had on the dating show back then. No, they no, they're they usually it, more they traditional. It, oh, they it's like more like traditionally scary. attractive dudes, yeah. But I think this one was just special because I think they were kind of. I'm I'm I haven't seen this episode, but I am gonna make a soft assumption that they're trying to hook up cosplay chick with this uh, University of Michigan fan. So I hope you guys cleaned up. Oh my god, that's no. That's, okay. that's so no. That girl looks Friday. like that girl looks like she listens to him, the gothic one, the cosplay one. Like her outfit, bro, a top hat in a van is mm-hmm. crazy. I'm gonna wear a I'm gonna wear a skirt in a top hat and, and sit in a van with two other. When I was 17, I would have let that girl ruin my life. Oh yeah, for sure. I would have been fucking like me and that girl would have been um, sharing the same zip up hoodie in the cafeteria. You know what I'm saying? You ever see? Yeah, you, yeah. Sharing was sharing a single ear. Earbud, and we're listening to fucking, we're listening to brand new or some shit. <laughs> Do you remember those goth couples in high school where they would just make the hoodie cocoon and just mm-hmm. fuck in it? <laughs> they would just be in the cafeteria, just, <laughs> just making a gothic, stinky ass cocoon. Waiting for the bus and a single Invader Zim zip up hoodie. <laughs> Just two people in a triple X Invader Zim hoodie from Spencer's. <laughs> and of course, it's got the thumbs cut out yeah. in the sleeves. 
and they're and they're and they're like making raw and nuzzle sounds. <laughs> Dude, yeah, they have so... the, the striped uh, hand war- arm warmers. Oh yeah, that's great. I had a roommate who still wore those. It was like nice. 2020, and he was still wearing those. And I was like, and my wife was like, "Be nice," and I was like, "Well, I mean, I want to help my, my boy." Ended up, uh, my boy ended up getting a big titty goth GF though, so it all worked out. Nice. That's my boy though. So. You know, I, I, I mean, I, that, for me, that was like 2003, you know, I can't, I, I was a little gothic kid in 2003, dude. I was listening to him and shit, watching Viva La Bam, and I had the trip pants. Oh, dude, I want to be gothic me for Halloween so you bad. Yeah. Gothic Ridley for Halloween. For the Halloween so episode, funny. you got to Halloween out. episode, yeah, we got to fucking drop like $500 on some trip pants you and a get big your eyebrow ass pierced, dude. Yeah, just, no, I'll just <laughs> put a fake eyebrow piercing in and like paint my lips black and yeah. shit. Like full, like full 100% committed goth. Patreon. Pa- <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's up to the Patreon? <laughs> but yeah, um, God. Wait, I, I wanted to say something else. After your friend got his big titty goth girlfriend, back in 03, it was like when your boy got a girlfriend, they're gone. Like, they're, you're never mm-hmm. going to see him again. So mm-hmm. it was like, dude, brother, he's like, salute. Adios. Like, just, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Succumb to the jugs. You did it. You succumb. <laughs> you subust. Subust to the jugs. All right, let's keep hey, watching. Spy kit. That's pretty cool. Spy I kit. Have no idea what's in here. Let's find out. Apply I love this light. song. In case it's dark. Latex gloves. Hey, yo. Check prostates. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Pick up things that I I don't... Check prostates. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That was a weird cut from post. Clean black light. I may be able to check fingerprints or any stains. No. (laughs) Oh, no, dude. Goth chicks, like, I squirted it all over the bed last (laughs) night. Dude, yeah, because the inverse... The inverse of a jizz check is a squirt check. <laughs> the girl's version of a jizz check is squirt check, dude. <laughs> Good God. I know that gothic girl's room's gonna smell like ferrets and she doesn't even have any. <laughs> Bitch, why does it smell like noodle like noodle like rodents in this motherfucker, dude? It smells like hamsters and stinky pussy in here. Every goth girl's bedroom smells like hamsters and stinky pussy. Everybody wants a goth girl until you have to you, you forget they kind of stink. Goth girls are stinky. I don't know. Something about like depression and hygiene <laughs> being hand in hand. It's just covered up in that cheap spray. Oh, yeah, you know? dude. Uh, fucking Victoria's Secret love spell. <laughs> yeah. Goth chicks, dude, goth chicks were banging with the fucking Victoria's Secret love spell. That shit is mad funny. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, I'm at the first fucking house. Let's sniff some panties. All right. <laughs> called it. Called it. Fucking called it. All right, we're at the first house. Time to sniff this chick's... Pretty... Nice. All right, so there's a cemetery across the street. It's uh, pretty spooky. Let's check out the uh, old beat-up Toyota. That baby works really good. Looks pretty cool. I, uh, I honor diversity as well. New brownie point for him. The house is looking pretty nice. It's uh, got a large front porch here. Oh, that's really nice. Big old Victoria. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts to the shittiest. Oh, for those of you listening to oh no, for those of you listening to the podcast, he walks into the Gothic girl's house on Room Raiders, and it cuts to the just shittiest fucking suburban <laughs> living room shot I've ever seen. It's just dark and dank, and none of the furniture matches. It's dude. People's houses looked crazy back then. Like, interior design was non-existent in the early 2000s. Like, we had no con... Like, millennials are so overstimulated by their parents, like, Gen X shitty, like, hoarder style. Did were your, did your parents have, like, just shit everywhere, or was it generally nice? And it was kept? okay. It was, for like, me, in the middle. For me, it was like, dude, my mom had so many... My mom had so many Buddha statues, and not, like, fucking Buddha. Like, fucking... <laughs> Fat Buddha with the giant earlobes, <laughs> like the ones at the Chinese restaurant. Yeah, the, you know the one that's slowly, the one that I'm slowly morphing into. <laughs> if you guys can't like uh, visualize, just picture that Buddha. Yeah, that's my mom had so many of those, and I think I'm just inherently becoming that guy. Like when I shave my head, when I inevitably have to succumb to shaving my dome, 
I'm just gonna fucking get fat ass gauges and just be Gu- Buddha. Gouda. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I almost said Gouda. That's how fucking fat I am, dude. I'll be Buddha. I'll be Gouda Buddha, dude. You got cheese on the brain. I got cheese on my mind, dude. You know, you know, your boy's always chasing that cheese, dog. Your boy's out here chasing that cheddar for real. My dog's going crazy here and that. He's like, where the fuck's the rat, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Marvel. You're on R3, baby. You should show up. Should we show Marvel? On yeah, R3? yeah. Come on, Marvel. Let's show the boys. Come here. Pick his paws up a little bit. Marvel, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. You want to say hi to the people? Guys, this is an exclusive. It's crazy that I'm, 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 I should have put my dog behind the paywall. Come here, buddy. Marvel. But we do this for you. We do this for you guys. Come here, Marvel. Come up. Marvel's making his special appearance. He's old, man. I, I have a 12-year-old pit bull named Marvel, and uh, he's stretching, and he's laying back down. So, yeah, well, um, I'm not picking him up. Yeah. <laughs> he's 75 pounds, <laughs> and I don't want fur all over my shirt. Maybe but he's we'll here. try again on the Patreon. Yeah, we'll try again on the Patreon. I, I, it just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, buddy. You bombed. <laughs> he, 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 I don't know. He, he doesn't care. He doesn't need your approval, dog. He's not. He doesn't like getting his picture taken. We'll go to take his picture, and he'll be doing, like, some... This This is what my dog does. This is what my dog does. Imagine I'm my dog, right? And I'm sitting on my couch or something, and I'm just... That's my dog, right? Just being hella cute. Go like this. Immediately <laughs> fucking will just be, like... Decutify himself, like, hey, yo, no, nah, you're not gonna post that. You're not gonna post me looking like a bitch on the internet, dude. You're not gonna catch me slipping, dude. So yeah, my dog is just always trying to stay tough He's trying to keep up appearances He's trying to keep the stereotype alive That fucking pit bulls are terrifying <laughs> He's like, nah dog, they can't see me like this It'll ruin everything <laughs> It'll ruin everything we've built over the last decades <laughs> We've got a reputation of the <laughs> yeah, it's... Thug face Just thugs up right quick Yeah, let's keep watching <clears throat> Not bad. Like a very comfortable house. <laughs> Hell very, no. Uh, old fashioned. The parrots. Looks like downstairs. A little too classical for me. What is your style? I don't think he has a style. But uh, it's comfortable enough, you know. So. Hey, he looks like Jared Fogle. Jared Fogle's just well, in your house sniffing your daughter's panties. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Oh no. <laughs> I'm actually gonna get, you know dive heads in here and uh, try to find out what color her hair is because that's very important. Ew. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to go look in her shower drain to find some hair so I know what color her hair is because that's what's important to me. Dude, you're not helping. This is like a fucking nerdy-ass Jared Fogle-looking dude going through your house, and he's like, I must find the fibers. Where are the fibers? I must find them and inspect them to see if they're to my standard. Incredible. If it's red Fast forward, let's go to the room. Let's see when he's in the room. Oh, okay, cool. We're in her room now. Fucking... Angled ceilings and lots of posters. Whoa. Lots of dolls and a uh, couple Barbies. Whoa. Blindfolded and then one can see. <laughs> this Barbie, she did a little dyeing of the hair, taped her up. Why are you spreading her legs? And uh, she's ready to go. <laughs> this guy's creepy as hell. <laughs> she's so creepy. This dude is creepy as fuck, dude. She seems to be uh, really into animation and uh, gothic clothing. Sick, dude. Like Pokemon awesome. Stadium 2. Yeah, yeah I would have fucking it? thrown it all away for Lauren, dude. She likes Pokemon Stadium 2. She has a poster. She hanging. likes walking around the graveyard. She likes walking around the graveyard and playing Pokemon, dude. This bitch is a... That's a catch. That's like an early 2000s catch, dude. Mm-hmm. She's uh, daring to be different. She could be very crafty. Hmm. You know, I would never wear this. Good. There's a little uh, frog hat. It compliments his eyes. <laughs> She's got some wigs. If she wants to, you know, change her hair color. Just slap But he's in a cosplayer know, girl's her. room and he's putting on her wigs and shit. This guy's crazy, dude. <laughs> That's fucking wild. But yeah, that was Room Raiders. I remember, dude. Room Raiders was silly. He, I'm gonna fast forward. Let's fast forward does, to see like, who he picks. Check. Oh yeah, let's see if he hits her with the jizz, uh, the squirt check. No, it didn't seem like it. 
Oh, then they go through his shit. Ew. Condoms, let's go. Yeah, they always cut to the condoms. You got really gross and um he really shouldn't knocked on my oh god at least you could see like my desk on the floor i'm not touching it but look that is disgusting it was sweaty <gasps> pillow Time reading material oh, oh they found his playboys Pizza his fap dungeon dude the <laughs> these three harlots these three harlots are perusing Pete's, my fap dungeon. Pete's fap dungeon Pete's fap dungeon how dare you enter the lair of peter Whoa, not the Vaseline in the bed, bro. Yo, my man was gooning like 2000. My man was gooning like it was 04. He had the Playboy and the Vaseline lotion combo. That's fucking wild. And then uh, for those of you listening, they looked at his computer, and he had like just a pile of used tissues on the computer. Bro, what the hell? That's the producers, man. They're like, yo, put some jizzy tissues on the computer desk, dude. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. They he cleaned the fuck out of his room, and they're like, "All right, dude, upload upload child corn onto his computer, and make sure it's the first thing they see when they walk in." And that's how Gerald. This is how Jared Fogel got caught. I love that. There's a part in the show where he charges in, and he's like, "Don't, whoa, put that down. Don't smell that." Nice to meet all of you. I hope uh, you liked all my stuff. It was yeah, fun. you have a really interesting. Uh, yeah, you have yeah. an interesting place. Cool. All right. All right. <laughs> Porn sites, Playboy, lotion on the bed. Just the cough into the past. <laughs> just. The decision that I want to go with room three. I just thought that the third room was uh, cooler. All right. Well, the second room was mine. First of all, I'd like to state that uh, I don't sleep in my bed. I used just to hang out on. Uh, second of all, you're not my type anyway. Sorry. I mean, I don't know if I could deal with the basically uh, unlivable living conditions. So. Oh shit. It's coming at your neck, boy. She's like, I don't think I could fuck a dude who's jerking off <laughs> in front of this computer all day. I can't be with a dude who's gooning 24-7 in his fucking fap dungeon. God, Room Raiders was unhinged, man. Well, thanks for taking a step down memory lane with me, man. I miss fucking reality TV, dude. I just miss it. It was so good. So funny. There's a couple good ones on now, but it's all dumb and like staged. And, yeah, know, it's super it's staged now. It's for then. It was kind of like they were just kind of riffing and just seeing mm -hmm. what the fuck. They, they would put a little bit of tap. They 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 put a little bit of a touch of production in there, but most of it, it felt more genuine and it was more low budge and all shitty. And I liked that. And it was like with the next one, they were like writing jokes almost. Like yeah. like like any stage stuff was like scripted stuff was like a joke that they wrote. Yeah, next was next had writers that just comedy funny, writers bro. at next. Next, dude, it's so funny. My favorite thing, seeing, or like some of my favorite memories as a kid, is watching Next and seeing like an Asian guy get off the bus and the white chicks just like get him out of here, dude. <laughs> Next, <laughs> just a white white guy, just uh, uh, Asian guy, just appears and she's like, Nah, I'm good. And then like a white guy comes out and she's like, All right, let's let's see where this goes. I'm not sure about him, but I I mean he's kind of cute. <laughs> like, I'm like what the fuck, dude? So just being a young Asian boy, just seeing like. Oh, Asian kings getting denied. It killed me, dude. Oh, we should you should plug the show. Oh yeah, we got a show, guys. Here, do, 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 do. Show announcement coming up. Uh we got a show coming up in uh Dallas. Dallas, brothers. Fort Worth. But Fort, well, Fort Worth. I don't know the difference. Why? It's all in the same. Uh, it's all in the same acronym. DFW homies, come out to hyenas. All my boys from the DF Dub. All my boys from the DF Dub. Come to hyenas comedy club. Come to hyenas comedy club. August thirty first. Thirty first. Ten p.m. Ten p.m. Michael Ridley in the red room with uh. Got a whole lineup of killers coming along with us. And uh, I think I'm going to do like 30, 45 probably. So if you guys want to see me do a little smooth 30 to 45, come to Hyenas. Come to God dang Hyenas in Fort Worth. Hyenas, Fort Worth, August 31st, 10 p.m. Come see us. Come see me do 30, 45. Who knows yet? I think I'll, I think I'll just run the 45 right quick. And then when are you... Uh Going to Virginia. Oh, uh, Virginia. I'm going to be with David Jolly September. <sighs> Christ, forgive me. This is a brand new date. Uh, September motherfucking goddamn 17th. I'm going to be flying to 
funny bone. Uh, I'm going to fly to the Virginia Beach funny bone. That's where I'm, my plane's just going to land right out front. It's going to be super sick. Uh, it's actually September 18th, I believe. I can't remember. i got to go back over there. But I'm going to be in Virginia Beach in September. And there's plenty of episodes that will drop, and I'll remind you guys of that. Well, me and David are still figuring it out or whatever. But most importantly, come see Ridley. Michael Ridley August. Live, Hyenas, Fort Worth, Texas, August 31st, 10 p.m. Please come for the love of Jesus Christ. I I'm need gonna you host. to come. Taylor is going to host. I'm gonna. I'm building a lineup right now, but I already kind of know who the fuck I want. People you've seen on the podcast, of course. And we're going to make shit. Uh, we're going to get jiggy, bro. We're going to have a good-ass motherfucking time. And then uh, also let them know what we got in store for the Patreon on this episode. We got something Ooh. very special. So um, you guys remember episode thirty three? I think maybe. Well, it was a, a recent events. I got in a little squabble on Sixth Street, and uh, your boy was victorious in said squabble. I think it was uh, episode thirty four when they tried to paint me as a villain, and I have video proof. That I was the hero all along, and it's only on the Radio Ridley Radio Patreon. Go ahead and head over there now. This is the first thing we're going to be going over in our Patreon episode that's following, um, that's being recorded immediately after the episode you're watching right now. So go ahead and head over to the Radio Ridley Radio Patreon and sub. Link is in the description. Link is in the description. Um, I haven't seen it, I only have my memory. If you guys want to brush up, on that, if you guys want to brush up on the story, go ahead and watch episode thirty-four and get uh, you know, get get some of that get some of that Ridley lore, get some of that R three lore, because I'm pretty sure we're gonna frame this motherfucker, <laughs> dude, and use the thumbnail, and that's gonna be like a perfect. We're gonna watch this and then we're gonna put it away. <laughs> like, I have no idea what's contained on this tape. I don't know if they even got the correct fucking. I gave them the incident number from the night it happened when the cops showed up. It's just and, a um, drunk fight with Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy. This could just be some random street fight on 6th Street that fucking's not even my street fight. Which but there one it did is. they ask for again? The one with the Asian guy. Yeah, and it's just like a fucking... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I pop this into the Xbox, and it's just a fucking Jet Li movie. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, this is just a bootleg... Uh, this is the Ray J. Kim K. sex tape. Just a bootleg. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Shrek 2. <laughs> I just have a copy. What if... Yeah, because I contacted the uh, Austin's Public Records, and it's like Austin PD's, all the footage, all the camera footage, you can get it from Austin Police Department. You just pay them a small fee, and they'll um, mail you a DVD of whatever case number or incident number you provide with them after you pay a small little nominal $8 and $2 shipping. And it would be so fucking funny if I just open, if we just pop this in and it's a copy of Blade. <laughs> like they just send me a copy of Blade. They're like, dude, you're fine, bro. You don't need it. <laughs> the guys in the officer just watching movies in there yeah like, oh sorry fuck recorded over my blade yeah <laughs> yeah so here it is this is the dvd so go ahead and go over to patreon if you want to see my first reaction if you want to see my reaction to my street fight god dude it was it was bad man he got a, he got on top at one point he got on top and he could have smited me i will put that on record and say that it could have got a lot fucking worse and i was uh you know taking a little bit of a victory lap but honestly bro like my life has been hell ever since my fucking wife got in that car accident. My wife got in a minor car accident, which led to me getting in that street fight and also led to me getting in uh, a car accident where now I'm losing my truck and it's getting totaled. And it's like, dude, it's just been a domino effect of horrible shit that's been happening to me. But also simultaneously some of the dankest shit. I've had like – this is the roughest month and a half of my life uh, of the of this year so far. But, dude, let's – let's just a quick highlight, bro. Um uh, I performed in the motherships. Uh, I, I performed in the Fat Man of the Comedy Mothership, and I brought Ron White on stage. That was killer. And then I went to fucking Los Angeles to see Kill Tony in Arena, and I hung out with Post Malone and made him laugh, and he liked me. That was fucking killer. That was my birthday. And then fucking dude, we went to Portland and we played a sold out show, and I sold merch, and fucking we had fucking liberal ice cream, and we ate edibles the whole time. That was fucking awesome. And then tomorrow, I'll be visiting New York City for the first time in my life to see Kill Tony at Madison Square Garden. So it's like, you got to take the bad with the good, you know? You got to take the shittiness with the, 
You got to take the shittiness with goodness. We you just know? had dope podcasts and started Patreon. Doing a, yeah, doing a dope podcast and cool. starting a Patreon and people online loving, uh, liking, and sharing my shit and fucking people recognizing me on the street from the show. Even though we we don't even have that much viewership, you know, compared to a major podcast, we're a very small, tiny, microscopic podcast. Yet locally, people fucking come up to me and. Tell me to keep going. And, I mean, even in Portland, we got rec- I got recognized in Portland. So, like, we're out there, you know, we're doing, we're fucking doing it, bros. Thank you for being part of this show. Thank you for being here with me. I know this one was kind of a freebie, chill-ass one. And uh, I just wanted you guys to remember fucking Room Raiders and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Like, they also had, what else did they have? Fucking um, Pimp My Ride. I could not be on Pimp My Ride with how anal I am about my car. I would just get my car back and be like, dude, exhibit, you fucking ruined it. What did they do to my boy? <laughs> fucking like, yeah, man, you said you liked pizza rolls, so we put a fucking toaster oven in the dashboard and six years worth of Totino's pizza rolls. I'm like, dude, what? Hey, bro. We heard you like doing taxes, so we put a fully staffed H&R block in the trunk of your Civic. You, like, pop your trunk. There's, like, people working in there. You're like, fucking, what the hell? Man, you said you liked wildlife and shit, so we put a koi pond in your, in your, (laughs) we put a koi pond in your rear passenger seat. And there's several, uh, ex, uh. Near extinct species inside your vehicle. So if you get in a car wreck, you're gonna be meet. You're gonna be met with a bunch of fines. Yo, dog, we heard you like taking shits. Yeah, <laughs> yo, dog, we heard you like taking uncontrollable diarrhea shits. So we just converted your driver's seat into a full Japanese toilet with the booty squirter. Don't forget, <laughs> exhibits like pressing the booty squirter. See, yo, shit gonna be squirting, dog. Yo, shit squirting. You just mad with your arms crossed. Yeah, thanks X to the Z. And then he fucking takes his fingers and he just crimps your shirt. Remember when he used to fucking do that to you? I, dude, I, pfft, <laughs> you I'm stealing off on fucking exhibit. On dude, I would spaz on the exhibit if you fucking hit me with one of those. You're like, you motherfucker, dude. Kind of disrespectful. It is kind of disrespectful. Like, they ruin your car and then he smudges your shirt. <laughs> with his oily car hands. Yeah. Exhibit, yeah. God. Well... Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Radio Ridley Radio. I'm your host, Michael Ridley. Send us an email at radioridleyradio at gmail.com. Uh, send me questions, you know, fan mail, all that stuff. If you want to contribute and help to the show, you already know. Um, if you found some parts of this episode super funny and you want me to clip it, be sure to help us out here at R3 and put your timestamps below in the comment section. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell two homies to tell two homies. And don't forget, I will be performing live in Fort Worth. Texas at Hyenas Comedy Club, August 31st, 10 p.m. I'll be doing 30 to 17 hours of comedy live. So if you guys want to, it's, it's going to be a comedy slumber party, dude. I'm doing an extended set. <laughs> You're staying over. You're staying over. Uh, I love me, you. Let me talk to your mom. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Come see us over at the Patreon. That's where we're heading now. I love you. Bye-bye. Yes. <laughs>